Hello everybody. Today we are starting with Advanced Web Designing Chapter 1 of a new syllabus eLearn Standard. To start with the new syllabus Advanced Web Designing, we all should be well aware about what are the basic tags in web designing. We already learned impressive web designing in our eLearn Standard. You all can visit this YouTube channel to study the basics that is impressive web designing. Now let us go ahead with advanced web designing. Students, we have already learned the design and the layout of the web pages using the CSS. Students can learn to design the website. Student can design the web form with validations. Student can learn concept of image map and iframe. The aim is to give the skills to create HTML web pages using HTML5 and CSS. So this is what we are going to learn this year. That is web form, image map, CSS and skills to create the professional HTML5 web pages. We have been introduced to the basic terminologies related to creation of the web pages. The hypertext markup language, HTML stands for hypertext markup language, is an evolving language with different versions supporting different features. There are many features in HTML5 so that we can create a good professional website. You can have your own professional website after completion of this portion of your eLearn standard. HTML5 is currently used because it supports mobile technology. The major browsers are Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, Microsoft Edge, Safari, Opera, and Apple. All these supports HTML5. In eLearn Standard, we have already studied different controls related to the form. Students, we are now understanding what are forms in HTML5. And in eLearn Standard, we have already studied some of the form controls. They are text, radio, checkbox, submit, reset, select, and text area. Some more form controls we are going to study this year. These controls, all these controls, that is previously what we have learned, and this year what we are going to study, all these controls are used to collect the different kinds of user input, such as contact details like name, address, single or multiple, options from group of the options as well as clearing and submitting the data etc. HTML5 has introduced additional form controls and these additional form controls we are going to study right now. HTML5 input elements input type equal text input type equals radio input type equal checkbox this is what these are all what we have learned into our previous uh, year. Now we will be studying input type equals color, input type equals number, URL, image, and some more. Input type equals color. What does it mean? It means it, it is used to display the color picker. What is color picker? Let me show you through an output. When I click, I already written the code for it. Let us see the output. This is a color picker. If you see, when I click onto this, it gives me a color palette so that I select some color from the color palette and I click OK, it gives me the color. It gives me the choice to select a color. This is a color picker. What is the code for this? Let us see the code written for this. You see? input type equals color name c1 okay when i write input type equals color i get this as a color picker so that i will be allowed to speak a color from a color palette moving to the another element input type equals number it defines a field for entering a number it defines what a field so that I enter a number, it gives me the scrolling box across the numbers. You see, 
I can type number as well as I can scroll through the numbers. What was the code written for this? Let us see. The code written for this was input type equals number. Input type equals number allows me to display a number text box. Allows me to display number box. Next input type equals URL. URL defines a field for entering the URL. It allows me to enter the URL. If I type anything else, I click on submit, it gives me an error. Please enter the URL. If I type a proper URL which consists of HTTP colon slash slash www.yahoo.com or whatever.com and when you click on submit, it don't give me an error. It will not give me an error. Okay, let us see the code for this. Code for this is input type equals URL. Name for an element can be anything of your choice. Next, input type equals image. It defines an image as a submit button. An image will be displayed as a submit button. Let us see the output. You see, this is an image. An image is displayed as a submit button. Let me show you the code. Input type equals image. SRC equals name of an image file. Okay. Input type equals image. SRC equals name of an image file so that that image will be displayed as an image submit button. So more elements. Input type equals date. Defines a date picker with a year, month and day. It allows you to select month, day and year. You see over here, when I click on DD, when I, when I scroll, it scrolls me to the dates. 30, 31 and allow me. It, the MM scroll allows me to scroll through the months and year allows me to scroll through the years. When I click on this arrow, it allows, it displays me calendar so that I pick some date. Next, input type equals email, defines a email for an email address. When I click on an email box and I, and I type anything, I click on submit, it gives me an error. Please include at the rate and it tells me you should have a proper email ID. So that when I type a proper email ID, okay, I click on submit, I get no error. I don't get an error. Then input type equal month, similar to the date, but date allows me to pick year, month, and day. Month allows me to select year and month. Let us see an output. You see, allows me to select month and year. From here, it displays me the calendar, so that I select some date from a calendar, and that particular month and year will be displayed. Let us see the code for this. It is input type equals month. Input type equals month. Next, input type equals range. Input type equals range. It def defines the range control. Range control for minimize and maximize. You see a volume control button similar to that. Def default range is 0 to 100. Let us see an output. This is a range control. A range control. For this, I have written a code as input type equals range. Input type equals range.
then we have input type equals date time local date time local time week are similar to dates but they date time local displays you year month day and time time displays you only a time allows you to accept only time and week defines week and year control let us see the output this is date time local see it is similar to date but along with the date it allows me to enter the time as well it is only time you see output uh, and uh, code it is input type equal in time this is only the time then we have input type equals week allows you to select a week of a particular year week of a particular year what is the code code is input type equals week input type equals search defines a text field for entering a search string a google text box allows you to type something and when you click on search the data will be searched across the web similar kind of search text box can be created using input type equals search it is nothing it uh, displays uh, nothing but a simple text box where you just type and you click on submit button the code for this goes as input type equals submit uh, sorry input type equals search then we are input typical file defines a file select field and browse button for file uploads it allows you to select a file for uploading purpose it gives you a browse button a choose file button so that when i click onto it a window from which you can select the file will be displayed and then you just have to select a particular file and when you click onto a file when you click on open the file will be upload it on click on submit button so file upload end of control can be this uh, displayed with the help of input type equals file input type equals file then your input type equals tell used to define input field that should contain as a telephone number to accept a telephone number or numerical typing only the numbers as a telephone number and when i click on submit the telephone numbers will be submitted to the specified url of action in form then let us understand some input restrictions some common input restrictions which can be used for validation purpose okay input tag has an attributes which work as an restrictions as an validations okay let us see all those attribute disable specifies that input field should be disabled input field should be disabled that means you are not allowed to type anything in there the text box will be displayed but you are not able to type let us see an output you see now this is a text box which is not disable if it is not disable i am allowed to type and this is a text box which i am not able to click as well see i am clicking but i am not able to click that means this is disable what code i have written for this let us understand you see input type email name as e1 i have not written disabled over here whereas into a second text box i have written input type equals email name equals something and disable so this disables the text box so that i am not able to enter anything into that input box then max and min specifies the maximum value for input field and min specifies the minimum value for the input field let us see the output for this you see enter number here i have not written any max and min but i can enter as much as big number if i want okay i can go it to negative number 
as well. But here I have written mean and max as one, uh, let us see, in the code, I have written mean and max as 10 and 1. That is minimum is 1 and max as 10. See, if I type over here 180, it will not allow, it will give me an error. See, value must be less than or equal to 10. See, if I scroll it, it doesn't go above 10. And if I scroll downwards, it does not go below 1 because mean and max number is 1 and 10. Then pattern specifies the regular expression to check the input values. This is uh, to be understood more. Key, uh, what are the regular expressions for input value? Pattern is a way, there is some way to type something into a text box. Okay, you want a particular format. In that format, only data should be typed. Like, say, for example, a format for SSC seat number is first there is a character and then there are uh, some six ca uh, new numbers. Okay, so that is a particular pattern. So in a pattern, if you want a particular pattern to be typed, then we make use of pattern attribute. Let us see different patterns. Pattern attribute. The pattern attribute works with the following input types. It works only with text, date, search, URL, tell, email, and password. Make a note of this. It works only with these input types. Okay, now what are the patterns? See, when I want to type first only three characters of, when I want to type only three characters, any characters from A to Z, whether it is capital or small, then this is a pattern which I have to write. Six or more characters, I write dot, curly bracket, six, comma, close the curly bracket. Means six or more characters. Similarly, I can make my own pattern whether I want a number to be entered, whether I want a character to be entered, so based on that, a lengthy patterns can be prepared. This is a pattern which must contain at least one number and one uppercase and lower letter and at least eight or more characters. Because this is a pattern for email. Let us see an output. See? For this is a three letter country code. If I type anything, okay, more than three characters, I click on submit, it gives me an error over here. Key. The pattern does not match. If I type only three characters, let's say for example, IND for India, I click on submit, pattern is matching. Password, okay, six or more characters, I type more, six or more characters accepted. If I type only few characters, if I type few characters, it gives me an error on click on submit. Then this is another password where I have given a pattern. If one character should be uh, numeric, one character should be capital, one character should be uh, lower case okay if I type anything I click on submit gives me an error must contain at least one number one uppercase lowercase at least eight or more characters okay similarly pattern for an email if I type something wrong then it gives me an error that's pattern Then we have read-only attribute. Specifies that an input field is read-only and cannot be changed. Okay, similar to disable. Disable does not allow you to click. Similarly, read-only also does not allow you to type anything into the field. Let us see. See, this is without read-only. I'm able to type. And this is read-only. I'm not able to click. I'm not able to type anything into it. Next, placeholder. Placeholder attribute acts as a temporary label showing the purpose of a text field without requiring a label tag. Means you have to type 
something into a text box and what you are supposed to type in a text box just and help a label key what a text box should contain let us see an output this is without a placeholder you see this is an uh, input box with the help of a placeholder the year i am i don't get any help into it whereas here i get a help okay this is a placeholder when i click over here and when i start typing that goes but if it is blank i get and place a holder and help key what am i supposed to type into a text box what is the code i have written for this let us see i have written input type equals email name equals e2 place holder equals some text this is an place holder next required specifies that an input field is required that means you have to type something into it you know many websites while filling up the form to a text box there is a red color asterisk mark means that field is compulsory to be entered if you want some field some text box to be compulsory to be entered by the user and user cannot keep it blank then you can make use of required attribute let us see an output required attribute and an email address this is without required attribute so even if i keep it blank it won't give me an error this i have given required attribute if i keep this blank i click on submit here i won't get an error but to a second input box i get an error i see i click on submit i get an error over here please fill when i type something into it and uh, proper email id i need to type and then i click on submit i don't get an error what is in code i have written for this the code goes something like this and the email address input type equals email here i don't have required attribute whereas here into a second input type i have an required attribute next auto complete specifies whether a form or input field should have auto complete on or off auto complete on or off means a text box should display the previously typed values if in a form a previously some values are typed in from the same computer then what were those values typed will be displayed if it is on if it is off they will not be displayed let us see an output you see without auto complete attribute that means here auto complete is off so i when i click over here i don't see any previously entered values here auto complete is on into my second input type when i click i get the previously entered values so that i just click and complete that text box this is auto complete on and off here it is off when i click over here i don't get uh the previously entered values whereas over here when i click i get the previously entered values the code for this goes something like this input type equals email auto complete equals off first text box it is off and second input type it is on then we have auto focus specifies that input field should automatically get focus when page loads when your page starts when the page starts automatically a cursor will be blinking into a text box so that user don't have to click user can directly start typing that is auto focus let us see output without auto focus see there is no cursor over here and here with auto focus you see there is a cursor over here so that user can directly start typing that is auto focus the code for this is input type equals email without auto focus and input type equals email name something and auto focus next we have height and width height and width specifies the height and width of an image you see input type equal image we have seen before okay the size of that image can be specified with the help of height and width attribute of input tag you see different sizes of a button of an image 
the board let me show you input type equals image some a, uh, name of an image file and height and width your height and width are written 50 this 50 is considered as a pixel whereas another one I have written height and width as 80 pixels multiple specifies that the user is allowed to enter more than one value in an input element and this works with input type like email and files that is more than one email addresses if you want to type into one input input type then we make use of multiple attributes similarly more than one file at a time if you want to upload then we make use of multiple attribute let us see an output without multiple attribute if I type a particular email ID okay along with a comma and another email ID it will give me an error choose file file to upload if I'm selecting a file to be uploaded if I click on one file and also simultaneously if I click on another file I am not able to select more than one file with shift button I am trying to select another file but it is only selecting only one file so I can only upload one file okay whereas with multiple attribute I can type one email ID along with another email ID separated with comma I don't get an error for this choose file file to upload you see I am selecting one file over here I press control button and also I am selecting another file see two files are selected I click on open you see two files where well, here I cannot select more than one file hence one file is selected in first file upload that is without multiple attributes when I click on submit this should give me an error because here I have selected I have given more than one email ID this gives me an error if I remove this I keep only one email ID here I have two email IDs still it's okay but here I should give one because this was without multiple attribute I click on submit I don't get an error then we have forms in HTML some other useful attributes used with input are ID and class ID this is used to identify the HTML element uniquely through the document object model into an uh, scripting language if I want my input type to be identified then I make use of ID attribute then I have class it is used to apply CSS style to an individual input element this is we when we learn CSS we will be learning more about what is class and what is ID but ID and classes they are also said to be universal attributes universal attribute means ID classes are used for all the elements all the HTML elements and not only to with input elements okay let us have a look at an example given in our textbook forms in HTML5 is a specified as a title then I have input type equal text where here I have written autocomplete equals on then I have email then I have date then I have time I have input type equal number where minimum and maximum number is specified then I have telephone number where pattern a particular pattern is specified a home page where you are supposed to type the URL and and submit button which displays you an image let us see the output output will look something like this let us see an output onto our web browser output onto a web browser looks something like this name email ID then date then time number minimum maximum is specified then there is a telephone number and URL where I'm supposed to type and I click I have a submit button as an image so this is an output this is all the input elements together okay use the multiple attribute this is do it yourself onto your textbook in your textbook 
use multiple attributes in input use pattern attribute it in input and see the output let us see we have already seen this uh, in our previous slides let us again have a look at it multiple attributes more than one email ids is not supported if it is not multiple if it is multiple more than one email id will be supported more than one file will not be selected for uploading whereas here if it is multiple more than one file will be selected for uploading the code for this goes something like this input type equals email input type equals file into second input type equals file there is multiple input type equals email there is multiple when you have multiple attribute more than one email or more than one file can be uploaded whereas if it is not multiple you cannot type more than one email id or you cannot upload more than one file use pattern attribute and input this is also we have seen pattern attribute country code i have written three letters country code if i type more than one more uh, than three it gives me an error if i type only i and d let's say for india i click on submit no error the code for this is something like this input type called text name country code pattern a to z a to z tree title tree letter country code so this is how it works multiple attribute and pattern attribute next is meta tag meta tag students we will be learning into our another video thank you for today have a nice day if you like this video please subscribe to this youtube channel and after subscribing you also click on to an bell icon so that you get the notification of newly uploaded video onto this youtube channel thank you have a nice day